I would say as a look of dissatisfaction. Me too. Me too. The overall picture has grown clearer, yes, but that's in spite of the forum being so maddeningly vague about this duty of theirs. <laughs> duty. <clears throat> Why are they so reluctant to explain their actions in plain words? Survival, come what may, is father's work so vital that it takes precedence over his own family? Alphino? Alize? It is you! Who... who dat? When I heard you'd been dragged before the forum, I came as swiftly as I could. I'm so very glad they allowed you to stay. M mother Oh. Emelian's Levelier at your service. And you fine people must be the science of, scions of the seventh dawn. How lovely it is to finally meet you. Oh, she's so sweet compared to her stupid husband. Mother, please, we don't wish to make things difficult for you. If word reaches father that you were here. Oh, bother that. Am I to be chastised for speaking with my own children? I'm well aware that you and Master Fortuno are not on the best of terms at the moment, but I've been absolutely desperate to see my darlings again. You will come by the house, won't you? I have gifts waiting. Aw, gifts! The timing couldn't be better. As matters stand, we shan't be going anywhere until we discuss matters with Thancred's group and reconsider our options. Go, visit your home. We will be back at the Annex when you're ready to rejoin us. Oh, not gifts for me. Okay. I'm not sure we- Naryu, what do you think? Guys, come on, go home. Naryu? The Naryu Akari? What a splendid day this has turned out to be. Champion of Eorzea, I insist that you join us. Oh, maybe gifts for me. <laughs> I don't remember what it's like to have a mom. That's my character. <laughs> ah, but we must be quick about it. Not for my own benefit, but should my husband return and find you enjoying our hospitality, the servants will be made to suffer the consequences. Naryu, if you would be so kind to escort my children to the estate, of course. And then she was gone, and with her, any opportunity to protest. <laughs> Indeed, the matter is settled. Enjoy yourselves, you three. I apologize, my mother is not one to take no for an answer. Still, I'm glad, relieved even, to see her in such high spirits. What say you, Naryu? Though it seems we shall have little time to enjoy it, will you accompany will you accompany us on our visit home? Of course. Fine, if we're going, then let it, let's get it over with. But be sure to stay in the entrance hall. No peeking into our private chambers, thank you very much. Oh, well now I've gotta. Why ever not? Your room was always perfectly neat and tidy. Everyone has things they'd rather keep to themselves, don't they? Cherished mementos you couldn't bring yourself to throw away, childhood toys. I mean, uh, never mind. Levier Estate is that way, straight down the stairs. Come on. Yeah, I don't need that again. When Alize and I were little, this bridge was as far as we were permitted to wander alone. I say alone, but my mother or servant was always somewhere nearby, keeping a watchful eye. And now look at us, traveling to different continents, different worlds even. As children, Alfino and I would often wait here for her father to come home from work. It must have been a day when his meetings ran long, because I remember growing restless and leaning out over the railing to watch the water rush by. Father, of course, arrived at that exact moment, came pounding down the path in a panic, crying out my name. Oh. It's like the biggest house in the entire city.
And here you are at last. Please, do come in. You got it. This music is so soothing. Welcome, Welcome home, my lady. Oh. Aww. Yes, it's very nice. I've never seen such splendor, what? apparently. What are you gawping at? I'm so <laughs> gawping. Hmm. Oh, I... I suppose I never gave the day call much thought. <laughs> I'm glad that you approve, I think. Very defensive, aren't we? Lord Fortuno is not to hear of this visit. And I should also like the children to have their gifts, ere my husband makes his return. The old voiceless main character, yeah. As you wish, my lady. At this point, it would be kind of crazy if they added voice acting to it. Master but I think it'd be kind of funny, Mistress too. Alice, if you'd All of a sudden, everybody's upstairs. like, what? Not, no stoic nod? We shan't be long. <laughs> yeah, it's just especially odd with no sound but mouth flapping. Yeah, no, I know. The twins have been sending letters home from time to time. Recounting their latest adventures. Neck muscles into next week, though. Yeah, exactly. Those nods. I am sure they withhold certain details, of course. If only to keep me from worrying. Uh, probably, yeah. Yet a mother worries all the same. In the early days, especially, I tried to support them as best I could. Sending the Scions coin and other such donations. Oh, how nice. Fortunately, they have found the strength to overcome adversity time and time again. Their words grow more confident with every letter, their depictions more vivid. The triumphs and defeats, the joys and sorrows. It is clear that they have come to find value in every experience. Good. But of those they treasure most, it would seem that meeting you might be the most impactful. I am pretty Since great. Since that fateful day, I do believe there has not been a single missive in which you were not mentioned by name. <laughs> <laughs> it is plain they care for you, and I am glad I care they for are them such too. a steadfast companion watching over them. They're like family. Under normal circumstances, I would offer you tea, but alas, these are anything but. In any event, why don't you keep me company whilst we await my children's return? Perhaps you might regale me with a tale or two of your exploits. I think that'll just make you worry for them more, but sure. Yep. Didn't even offer me a seat, though? Jeez. When you mentioned gifts, I wasn't sure what to expect. Mother, I... Oh, look how well it fits you. And the style is to your liking. It's perfect. Aww. Exactly what I would have chosen. But please, tell me you had something different made for Alphano. <laughs> Naturally. You are hardly little children anymore. But well, wouldn't it be funny if he had to wear those little booty shorts? And while I shall miss dressing you in those precious matching outfits, 
I must respect the individuals you have grown to become. See for yourself. Thank you for the splendid clothes, Mother. Stylish, comfortable, and eminently practical. I am so glad you like them. Where they am are, I? however, missing one some. final touch. If you would allow me, Master Alphano. New weapon? Tell me it's a hat. Oh. Right. I forgot that he was going to be the sage. Wait. Are these... A sage's tools of the trade. They belonged to your father. Though he may as well be chained to his desk these days, as a student, he was often called upon to venture into the field. He wielded those armaments, both to heal and to harm in no few battles. None so fierce as those you two have braved, perhaps, but battles nonetheless. I know that, like, the game isn't ending. Like, I know this is the last expansion pro or whatever. It's the end, but not really. But, like, I'm finding myself getting, like, emotional through all of this, thinking about, like, everybody and, like, the growth and the fact that I've been playing this game since before it was even released. And so, like, if I cry, guys, don't tell anybody. Thus did okay. I pull them out of storage to show Oops. you that he was not always the man who stands in vehement opposition to you now. I'll deny it. <laughs> and also because it would be a terrible waste of ridiculously expensive House Leveilleur commissioned artistry. Okay, I won't tell everyone immediately and make recordings and stuff, but I'm I am I'm told not these emotional, I'm just, I just have a, a cold, and but so I'm sniffly. Your extensive experience should soon have them darting about with grace and aplomb. May the wisdom in that crystal serve you well. And please, try to find common ground with your father, that you might come and go without need for this awful subterfuge. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not their fault that he's being an asshole, but that's just my opinion. We will, Mother. I promise. My final gifts to you, before you run off, are an observation and a suggestion. So these... the dungeons for this expansion, can you do them as trusts? Because I want to see him in action as a sage. Firstly, Fortuno has ever been a serious man. But it was only after you were born that he truly lost himself in his work. I don't know if that's the comfort that you think it is. I may not know the forum's inner workings, but I know your father's. The timing of that change in him holds some significance. Secondly, do not seek to best your father with words. Far better that you simply show him let him discover the merit of your actions after they cannot be undone. So you're saying disobey him directly? All right, I can get behind this. <laughs> was that oh, was that funny? Oh. We shall take your wisdom to heart. Thank you again for these gifts and farewell for now. Safe travels, my children. Eat well, stay warm, and keep your friends close. And don't forget to drink your water. Oh. 
I gotta change the hair back. I'm I already want I already miss my old hair. Thank you for indulging Mother's request. I can see it meant a lot to her. And I uh, shall refrain from inquiring as to the content of your private conversation. Our, our visit was all too brief. For now, however, it will have to suffice, as will these tokens of home that we carry with us, these gifts to help us remember who we are and whence we came. But enough sentimentality. Let us return to the Annex and rejoin our companions. You got it, dude. Oh. I didn't realize there was a quest from Thancred. Oh, right, 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 right. We'll get to that in a minute. Enjoyed your time with the level years, I hope? Level years? Whatever. I would ask how the twins fared, but their new outfits tell, all, tell the tale. I only hope we can help them to reconcile with their father, that they might return home one day with their heads held high. In the meantime, we edge ever closer to the secret the forum strives to hide, and the flower bequeathed to you by Heidelin is sure to guide us going forward. I'm confident that once you've scouted out the situation in Thavnir, we'll be well equipped to plot our next move. I have Kryl's instructions in hand. If you're ready to set out, then so are we. Having been to Thavnir before, I can travel by Aetherite, but what of the rest of you? Another sea voyage would waste time we do not have. Kryle was of the same mind and has already secured the aid of the good folk of the Confluence. We'll take ourselves there. Oh. What's wrong, Ariange? The Confluence, thou sayest. I'm afraid so, my friend. What's happening here? <laughs> Thou wilt recall the hunt for Iceheart, unto whose sanctuary we delivered thee, knowing, owing to the knowledge of our comrade Monbreda. Breda, whatever. Thou wilt rec oh. Monbrida was an authority on aetherology, a field of study she did embark upon in pursuit of her parents' example. Both are authorities in their own right, and are and both are researchers at the Confluence. Haven't you gone to see them yet? You haven't told them? Oh, Jesus. I attempted to do so earlier, but to my shame, my courage failed me at the last. As it hath the many times I thought to reach out to them after sending that fateful letter. Oh, Rianche. Neither time nor introspection have revealed unto me the words I should speak, and thus have I kept my silence. Whether you come with us or no is your choice and yours alone. If it is too difficult, we'll manage. If it's settled, then let us be off. When we arrive, we should look for a researcher named Kit. Kite? Kit. Hey guys, here I am. Well now, this is rather a lot of stern faces. Are my library books overdue again? Not to our knowledge. <laughs> oh, come on, Thancred. We're associates of Kriel, Kriel from, of the students of the Baldessian. We seek passage to Thavnir and understand that you can assist us. Ah, the test subjects. Welcome, welcome. Test subjects? Oh, you hadn't heard? Well, then allow me to explain. So in order to travel to an Aetherite, you ordinarily need to be attuned to it beforehand. Otherwise, you can't use it as a beacon to seek out while you're a mess of Aether hurtling along the life stream. What a nice way to put it. An inconvenient, but incon incontrovertible limitation of Aetherite teleportation. But what if I were to tell you that there's a way to travel to an Aetherite without being attuned to it? I would say that I wasted a lot of time walking around in this game. A way to teleport instantly to places you've never been. 
For long years, we've labored to make such travel possible that people might move more, move about more freely. And we've finally done it. We've created a new kind of aetherite that doesn't require attunement. Truly, that changes everything. Well, my language may have been a bit, a bit misleading. The user need not attune to these aetherites, but the aetherites themselves must have been pre-attuned to each other, thereby facilitating travel between the two points. But ju it just so happens that of our first test pair of aetherites, one has been installed here in Charlin, the other over in Yedlimod, a port town in Thavnir. As you may know, our nation has long maintained strong ties with Radzat's, Radzat Han, and indeed, we owe much of this breakthrough to the contributions of their alchemists. So to sum up, we're to test these aetherites. How fortuitous for you. I should mention that an accident has impaired my ability to channel aether. Will this be a problem? Not at all. As a matter of fact, you might say these aetherites were made for people like your good self. The magics imbued within will whisk you away without any effort on your part. A veritable dream come true, and far be it from me to worry about such things, but do we have permission to make use of your shiny new invention? The only permission required is yours, so assuming you're willing, we're all set. It may come as a surprise, but we actually struggle to find test subjects. Most people seem to have an unreasonable fear, fear of their souls gradually disintegrating as they drift helplessly in the life stream, in the statistically unlikely event that something goes awry. But it's plain that you aren't most people. Mistress Kryle truly knows how to pick them. <laughs> if I might change the subject, our Master Wolfson and Mistress Blo Blo Bloida not present today. Oh, you didn't hear? They've recently resigned their posts. Their expertise was needed elsewhere. A large-scale project helmed by the forum itself, as I understand. But I'm not privy to the details. I see. Any other questions? No? Then let's get going before you change your minds. Please see to your preparations and head outside to the Aetherite Plaza. I'll be along shortly. Words are hard, guys. Words are hard. Right. We're all oh. set. Just the four of you, was it? Mm-hmm. I think. Three. Oh. I'm already attuned to the crystal in Thavnir. What he said. You are? Oh. I would have preferred more test subjects. Mm. Oh, well, never mind. If our three travelers could line up here, please. Sure. Take a deep breath, and I'll soon have you soaring through the ether. Feeling confident. Oh. Oh, and one last thing. Mm -hmm. You might experience a teensy weensy touch of violent ethereal sickness. <laughs> Teensy weensy touch of violent ethereal sickness. Okay, no big deal. What? <laughs> I don't know why she's rejoicing already. Does she know we ended up where we were supposed to? Possibly? Yeah, it's Rod Radza and on Whatever. Thavne, home to city-state Radzat Han. Rising from the southeast waters of the Bounty, 
This Isle of Plenty served as the battleground for a conflict between two peoples. Their cultures bled into one another until a unique amalgamation was distilled from the chaos, in a process not unlike their precious alchemy. Once solidified as a single nation, an adamant stance of neutrality would hold invaders at bay. For a time. We did now it. across this vibrant isle creeps a fog of malice. What choice do you have? Ooh, uh-oh. Oh, that's the sickness. Yeah. <laughs> what chance? Rianje is just fine. He's fine. Oh, never mind. It's fine. Now we'll again, attune normally. We won't have to do that again. I would love to see what it looks like, but it's pouring. No, oh, poor Thancred. Ooh. It's not our fault, Estinian. I've seen fairer faces after a bout of bad shellfish. <laughs> Let me bring you something to drink. That should help settle your bellies. Ginger ale? I'd like some ginger ale, please. I would like some there apple appy slices, actually. Don't let a Stinian roam the markets alone. He's alarmingly bad with his uh -oh. <laughs> Well, am I gonna have to do it? <clears throat> Uh, I hope it's gonna give me some kind of effect. You managed to will yourself to your feet, but given your condition, will you be able to reach Astinian in time? I guess we'll find out. Where did he go? Uh, oh. It's fine, we're fine, go. Oh. Astinian, no! That's kinda cool. You there, I need three drinks, something that helps with aether, aether sickness. But by the Menusa, Menusia, a traveler, I mean greetings, greetings and welcome. You are wise, good sir, to come to me. My special Amralasi, made with only the finest and freshest ingredients, is famed for calming unru unruly bellies. By way of warm welcome to Thavner, I'm pleased to offer it to you for the low, low price of 19,800 gil. For not one, not two, but three bottles, a bargain amongst bargains. Hmm. Estinian, no. The price is high road robbery, and you want to say as much to Estinian, but you realize any words of warning you cry out would be accompanied by your last meal. You must stand before Estinian and, using gestures, deny that the deal is fair. So, like, in front of him? Hmm, I thought you could barely stand. What do you need to tell me that's so urgent? Wait, I shouldn't buy the lassie? The merchant is swindling me. Ooh ah. <laughs> so sincerest apologies, sir, but I appear to have my prices confused. It's actually 1,890 gil from, for the three bottles of lassie. Hmm, that confusion would have been quite costly for both of us. Well then, your coin. Here, a bottle for each of you. Take them to the others and get some rest. You expect me to go back there? When I... I'll be back after I've explored the town. Am I... Can I take mine first? 
No. I guess I already did, because I only have two now. Is this person floating on toast? It's not toast. It looked like toast with jam on it. Here you go. Please don't throw up on me. Praise be to the twelve. My stomach doth loosen its death grip. My heart felt thanks to thee, Anastinian, and to thy and to the fine fruits of this land. You were in time? Excellent. You've spared us Tataru's wrath. Sweet, sweet release. If you haven't already, you should have yours too. I did though, I think. Right, I'm ready to get on with it. That lassie truly worked wonders. Back on your feet, I see. The thy hair Oh no, would you Oh. I have bound it. Tis the most I could do against this heat short of shedding my armor. May I ask where you got the cord for it? A local vendor oh no. A local vendor. The man said it's Thevnarian weave, tough and not easily unraveled. And how much did it cost? 9,400 gil? A steal, I was told. Tis nothing fancy, but I've always valued function over form. That's incredible. I dare say not even Alphano could hold a candle to you. Oh, thank you for the hydrate. It's not uncommon for merchants, merchants to set their prices high, but doesn't it seem excessive here? Mm. Are all Hanish merchants so... Uh, yeah, let's do this one. I'm inclined to agree with thine, in, with thine assessment. It doth seem excessive, unusually so. Claiming Thavner as its dominion, the nation of Radzat Han hath long thrived as a hub of commerce. In the beginning, there were the... Arcasadora, a Matanga tribe indigenous to this island. Over time, they came to be joined by other races, and through their intermingling, a culture rich and distinct did emerge. From alchemy to te textiles, the, product, the products of Hanish culture have come to be celebrated and coveted the world over, a development only aided by the nation's prime location as a waypoint betwixt east and west. All of this hath combined to make a trading power of Ra Radzat Han, yet such a status cannot be taken for granted. Nay, it must it must needs be maintained through judicious governance and stringent regulation. Neither of which I see any evidence, given that merchants at a gateway town are free to fleece hapless travelers and tarnish the reputation of the nation at large. Just so, that opportunistic pricing is rampant. That opportunistic pricing is rampant doth suggest that, that oversight is much, much weakened, or mayhap that the people have fallen upon hard times. Whatever the truth may be, it would be prudent to ascertain the current state of affairs. Prudent and practical, aye, we've not to lose by learning more. So, ere we seek out Kryle's acquaintance, shall we see what information we can gather here in Yedli Yedlimad? Butchering all the names. Excellent. We didn't exactly get off to a flying start, but we'll make up for it. Okay, so like, let me attune to the Aetherite so I don't have to go through that again.